good afternoon. My name is Joe Bandel and I am the Rosicru last Rosicrucian. Today we're going to do the Oak Advantage number eight, which is a happiness test. How happy are you? Happy, happy, happy. Okay, a person sets up prosperity and earns happiness from within. What a, hand, what a mouthful. Prosperity, if you'll remember, comes from producing things that other people want. So it's values, it's something that other people want and they're willing to pay for in one way or another and give you recognition for it. And so it's, it's in that interaction with others that in a productive sense of sharing values that, that we find happiness. You can think of, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You can take a child who has some toys and they won't share the toys with other, other, child, other children. But you know, when a child can learn to share toys with another child, they can have fun together. And that's, that's even happier than just kind of being by yourself. I'm just saying, you know. Um, so that's about prosperity, but earns happiness. So it doesn't just come, you have to earn it. What a concept. I don't know if you've ever thought about earning happiness. Shouldn't it just be like given to you or something like that? Uh, no. Happiness cannot be taken from the material world or from another person. Worldly pleasures can't really bring you happiness and another person can't really bring you happiness because you know what? You're stuck with yourself. You got to learn to love yourself. You have to like yourself. If you can't do that, <clears throat> it, it won't work. That's why self-esteem and following that still small voice of conscience is so powerful and so necessary. Because if you can't forgive yourself, it doesn't matter if other people can forgive you. You know, you, you gotta you gotta love yourself. It depends on genuine self esteem and personal competency in life. That's the earning part. You gotta demonstrate it. You gotta show that you have it. You gotta be competent at maintaining happiness, maintaining it. It's a deeply personal inner matter. You can't judge another person's happiness. You might think some person's a real crab because when you interact with them or you see them, you're, you're perceiving things that may or may not be true. How many people do you know that are the life of the party? Hey, I used to be the class clown when I was in high school. I used to be the class clown. And you know why I was the class clown? I craved attention. I wanted it. It was because I felt so insecure in myself. In other words, outwardly, I was just a barrel of laughs. And inwardly, I was crying. I think that happens to a lot of people. Just, just because somebody's manic doesn't mean they're happy. Because what we're talking about is a stable, this is where it's at, or well, I should say, this is where it's at, just about all the time. Chronic. It's a habit. Uh, happiness can be a chronic, uh, chronic thing. 
just like depression can be a chronic thing. It's where you're at most of the time. And there's high levels and there's low levels. To achieve happiness, an individual must be mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually happy, and physically happy. The full spectrum. We have all these experiences. All these We experience life in so many ways. And true happiness is when we're active and we function and we're aware in all of those areas. What causes unhappiness is what the repressions, the blockages of the energies that are within us. And those blocked, trapped, toxic energies cause disease and illness, like cancer, for example. No, happiness, we can't confuse that with what a lot of people might think of happiness, like, well, they got drunk and they're happy, or they they are on a, a trips on a drug. Uh, this is a false sense of happiness, such as profit by fraud. You cheat somebody and you get what you thought you wanted. Is that happy? We're not call happiness that way. Victory by force, beating somebody up, forcing them to cave in. Is that going to make you happy? Is that a true type of happiness? That's not the type of happiness we're talking about. Success by deceit. You cheated somebody. You got the better of a bargain. You falsely represented yourself. No. That, that's not what we're talking about, happiness. Uh, again, pleasure by drugs. Now, there's a book here that's pretty fascinating. It's by L. Ron Hubbard, The Science of Survival. And you can see another thick book. I love thick books. That is a fascinating read. And tucked in the back of it, they have a chart. It says the chart of human, well, it's a tone scale. And I'm just briefly going to measure, go down a few, go down a few lines just to give you an idea of what L. Ron Hubbard had to say about how you can where you're at most of the time determines how healthy you are on the full spectrum of behavior. Because what this chart does is it shows several different areas in life and it compares how a person would act at a highly healthy level and down, down, down to a deeply troubled level. And of course, this they use this chart to determine uh, how much Dianetics processing people need, could need, or whatever like that. It's kind of a, like a guide that they look at. But it's a tone scale, and when you talk about a test of happiness, it kind of fits in with what we're, this topic I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to kind of bring it up, just for fun, we're going to look at it. In the area of emotions, you have, and we're going from the top down, and see where do you fit in for most of the day, for most of the time. Acceleration, eagerness, strong interest, mild interest, contempt, indifference, boredom, Expressed resentment, uh, crabby. Anger, unexpressed resentment. Fear, oh boy. Is this, uh, is, do we have fear within our society about certain little 
germs or viruses that might be going around. That's not at a very uh, high spot. Below fear, grief, apathy, the deepest apathy. You just don't care. That's, you know, like the clinically depressed person. So where do you fit on there? Let's go to another one, affinity. Uh, how you get along with other people, basically. Love, strong, outgoing. Tentative advances, friendliness. You're out there a little bit. Tolerance without much outgoing action. Acceptance of advances that are offered. Uh, you're not taking a risk, really, but, you know, you're open to people coming up to you. Neglect of person or people. Withdrawal from people. Boy, <laughs> Kind of, I kind of, that kind of, I'm a hermit. I'm kind of withdrawing from people. So that means, according to this chart, I could be doing a lot better. Maybe. But I would rather be around healthy people than, and I don't think there's too many there. Antagonism. That's antisocial. Hate, violent and expressed, expressed it. Uh, covert hostility. What's covert hostility? Covert hostility is where it's stab them in the back type of thing, you know? Outwardly, you're like buddy buddies, and inwardly, you're trying to give them the shaft. Acute shyness, propitiation, withdrawal from people. As a young, as a child, and a teenager and stuff, I was just horribly shy, ter terribly shy. Uh, so uh, I was deeply troubled. I, I was at the low, low end of this, definitely. Uh, below that, supplication, pleas for pity. Sounds like uh, Zelensky almost over to Ukraine there. Complete withdrawal from person or people. So, I showed you on that, or I shared, you know, I, I was pretty darn low there uh, uh, when, I, when I was young. When I, when I was young, I had a very weak self-esteem. That's because... Uh, I had a very domine domineering father that uh, seemed like I could never do right. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, and that doesn't represent where I'm at today. Today, on that scale, where would I be at? Uh, I would... I would say I'm up there among tolerance without much outgoing action and acceptance of advances offered. I'm not up at the top where you have love, strong, outgoing, tentative advances, friendliness. Um, I'm not reaching out to people really. Well, in a way I am reaching out to people in these videos. Does that count? We'll do one more, just for just for grins here. Reality agreement. Search for different viewpoints in order to broaden your own reality. Changes reality. Hey, I'm there. I'm there because that's what I do. I'm looking for different viewpoints. That's why I got all these books and stuff like that. I, I love to be challenged and changing my beliefs, changing my understandings. Uh, that's what the Rosicrucian is considered a walking question mark. That puts me there, which kind of 
brings up an interesting point, which means you can be really high in one of these areas and maybe not so high in some of the others that need to be worked on a little bit because we're all a work in progress, okay? Uh, let's see. Ability to understand and evalu evaluate reality of others and to change the viewpoint. Agreeable. Again, uh, I can usually affirm, you know, try to be supportive of other people's views, perspectives of reality. I, I'm in there. I'm in there. I like that. Awareness of possible validity of different reality. Conservative agreement. Hmm. I can tell it's, yeah, it's in certain situations, especially when you're dealing with people at the lower end, this kind of comes in. If you're dealing with people at a lower end, on the lower end of the scale, it's kind of like, okay, I'm not going to argue with you for the sake of arguing, you know. But what good is it going to do? Uh Refusal to match two realities, indifference to conflicts in reality, too careless to agree or disagree. This brings up an interesting point because it's in dealing with these, I'm going to call them troubled people, the crazies or whatever. I just kind of like, I'm not interested, I'm not going to talk to you about it. But it's because of where they're at. If you're on this, if you're up here on the scale and somebody else is down here, how are you going to have a meaningful interaction? Or if somebody is up here and you're down here, how are you going to have a meaningful interaction? To have a meaningful interaction with somebody, you got to generally be on the same level wherever that is, wherever that is. If the if it's the difference is too great, it's just going to cause problems. Verbal doubt, defense of own reality, attempts to undermine others, and disagrees. Oh boy, verbal doubt, argue. I'm right, you're wrong. I, am, I, I, I have reached the point where I avoid that. I'm not going to go there. I don't like, I, there's no reason for me to, uh, the, the conflict, the, the bad vibes, the conflict, conflict and argument. Destruction of the opposing reality. You're wrong. It disagrees with the reality of others. When you just, somebody just flats out says, you're wrong or you flat out say you're wrong. And you know what? What's interesting here is that in some cases, again, this is in, in, when I'm dealing now on a, when I'm dealing with some of these people that are kind of down at this level. And even in these videos, I'm starting to say, you know what, you're wrong. Does that mean I'm going down the scale? <laughs> uh, could be. I, I So I, I guess I'm not... It's kind of like when, when, when all society is crazy... How does that does that how does that mean you're healthy or unhealthy or something like that? Which is a point that I'll be making here pretty soon, but let's finish this column. The doubt of your own reality, insecurity, doubt of opposing reality. You're just confused. I have no freaking clue. <laughs> And okay, uh, shame, anxiety, strong doubt of own reality, 
easily has the reality of others forced on him. Uh-oh. External authority. Listen to the experts. When they force their knowledge, their politically correct ideas on you, Ooh, that's way down there at the bottom, guys. Complete withdrawal from conflicting reality. <laughs> no reality at all. Person, so uh, they don't even think about things. How many people, uh, they won't think about politics. They won't think about religion. They won't think about what's going on in the world because uh, 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 that's uncomfortable that's too dangerous I'm better off just kind of minding my own business and sitting here okay many psychologists believe mental and emotional health depend upon how well a person adapts to the views and opinions of others how politically correct you are depends on how, determines how mentally and emotionally healthy you are. Do you believe that? I, 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 as a person who believes in the still small voice of conscience, the inner compass, uh, the divine spark, in each human heart. This is my inner authority and I believe that everybody has an inner authority that they could listen to if they chose to listen to it. And this whole concept of the outer authority is very, very, very low, low level. It's very on the low end. <clears throat> that belief that mental and emotional health depends on a person's ability to be politically correct, that belief places conformity as the standard. Instead, mental and emotional health depends upon loyalty to honesty and to the still small voice of our conscience. That's what I just said in another way. I kind of got ahead of myself there. If you are lying to yourself, you can never be truly happy. You gotta be honest to yourself, not lying to yourself. To me, that seems kind of obvious. With tools like the tone scale, we can easily determine the direction a person is moving towards prosperity and happiness in life or towards conflict, unhappiness, and death. And I want to leave you with a thought. Just in our day-to-day -day interactions with people, knowledge of tools like this, knowledge in your interactions with somebody, you can tell where they're at. And on, the, on these tone scales and you can tell relatively how healthy or how sick they are. Now granted we, we all have good days and bad days so you have to kind of take it as, a, as an average but you're not fooling anybody. We it's it's self-evident where a person's at, what comes out of their mouth, what their actions are, tells them right, tells you right where they are at on this, on this type of skills. Just something to think about. This is important empowerment tools and you know, what we're talking about. That's what this whole series of it, Oak Advantages is about, is empowerment, how to get more in life. 
and we're trying to I'm trying to start discussions so I uh, share some comments share some ideas you disagree you agree I'm I, I'm uh, inter I'm interested in, in hearing from you and if you like this video uh, give it a thumbs up that helps me a little bit if you really want to get into the self-empowerment stuff subscribe so you're gonna make not miss any of the 114 self-empowerment advantages that I'm going to be sharing. We'll see you next time.